How you like that professional opening? Pretty cool, huh? My brother gave me that sign for Christmas. I think it was Christmas. Okay, time for another famous crown and comments with Cruise Man. Well, I want to welcome everybody to another Crown and Comments. I've got my favorite adult beverage, which is Crown Royal. I've got, I don't know, finger and a half. So uh, this is the time where usually once a month, it's July 7th today, usually once a month I'll uh, sit down and I'll get my computer out and I will go through some of the comments that I've received on various videos or Facebook posts. Sometimes they're emails. And uh, this is just a, a it, you know, it's generally motorcycle related, but I might get off on a tangent. This is my opportunity to kind of vent a little bit um, or just talk about whatever. So I hope you enjoy it. What I recommend you do is go get your favorite adult beverage. It does not have to be alcoholic. It can be anything. Maybe if you're a friend of Bill W's, maybe you want to get a, uh, I don't know, a, a soda or a glass of water. It doesn't matter. A cup of coffee. doesn't matter. And uh, the, the, the key to this is this video is just about having some fun. Uh, I'm going to talk about, you know, kind of some of the things that you guys have asked me or that you've commented on. And I want to first invite all of you, if you are passionate about motorcycles, please take a second to click that subscribe button down below. Uh, you don't want to miss any of my reviews or my maintenance-related uh, content. Uh, thanks for joining us today, and let's get started. First of all, I want to tell you a couple of stories. Uh, as most of you know, I had the BMW, the 2022 BMW K1600 GTL, uh, for almost a month. In fact, it might have even been a month. I'm not sure. And all of these videos have done exceptionally well. And I want to thank all of you for supporting the channel by watching these videos and uh, putting in comments and likes, because that really does help the channel. And the videos actually have gotten quite a bit of exposure. Uh, and I think we've had a lot of new subscribers in the last month. I think probably a lot of the BMW guys came over that didn't even know about Cruise Man's Garage. So I want to welcome you uh, to the family. I did uh, return the bike a couple days ago and uh, dropped it off. I think I put about 1,600 miles on the bike while I had it. And uh, it was quite an experience. It was something that's long overdue. I've had a lot of people over the years ask me to do something like that. And I just never had, uh, really just never had the opportunity. And I think uh, I really want to thank, again, I want to make sure to thank BMW Motor Rad for um, including me in the press event out in California, allowing me to have the bike for such an extended period of time. Uh, first, I want to bring you up to date on a couple of other things. Some reviews I was working on. Uh, one was a, uh, a video that I was doing. It was actually a sponsored video a review of a product. And I don't do a lot of sponsored videos. And by sponsored, that means the company was going to pay me uh, to make a, a unboxing and installation review video of their product. This particular product, I'm not going to mention a brand name because I don't want to uh, you know, drag names into this. But the company wired me the money. They paid in advance. So uh, I received the product in. I went to do the unboxing. The first thing I went to do is to charge the product, and there was an issue getting the charge cable in, which is not a big deal. It's pre-production model. I wasn't too concerned about that. Uh, the second issue is I took it out to the bike and I started using it. And, you know, bottom line is it just was not going to be a good fit for this channel. I mean, I, it's not... Uh, after using it and testing it in a real-world environment, and I don't want to get into the details at this point, uh, it just wasn't something I would feel comfortable recommending or even having represented on the channel. So I contacted the company and told them this and said, you know, I don't think this is a good fit. It's not going to work. I appreciate you paid for this. I'll refund your money. The odds are they're going to get all this stuff resolved before they actually go into production. So I didn't want to, you know, make a big deal out of it. I want to try to kind of treat them fair. 
That was one issue. The second issue is I finally got the Cardo Pack Talk Edge in the other day. Um, and was did my unboxing video for that. I, I haven't put any of this online yet because I'm waiting until I get the review done. And I don't want to, you know, I don't want this to be the review, but I do want to let you know that I'm having some real issues with this new Cardo Pack Talk Edge. Uh, first of all, let me tell you the good thing, and this is first impression stuff. I just tried it for the first time today. The good thing is I love the form factor of this new Bluetooth communicator. It's very thin. It's very light. I love that. It's a great form factor. It has this new magnetic mounting system that's super, super cool. I just love that. Very easy to mount. Pretty easily pairs to the Goldwing. I didn't have any trouble getting it to pair up to the audio system. And it, uh, in my initial tests, it worked fine with Apple CarPlay. So I was able to use Siri to send a text and to make a phone call. However, uh, on the downside, I'm having trouble getting enough volume through the uh, speakers. I don't know why. I have the speakers in the, mounted in the same helmet as I had on the last headset I've been using. Didn't have any trouble. Um, I normally turn the audio system up to about 13 to 14, and I can hear fine going down this exact same road that I go down all the time. And on, on the Cardo, I had to turn it up to like 17 or 18 just to be able to hear it. Uh, I don't know why. And I went into the app and I set the volumes all the way to max just to make sure. Didn't seem to make a big difference. And I'm also having trouble pairing it to my GPS on the second channel. Now, I followed the user instructions and I've, I, I've tried it four or five times. And based on the way they have the user guide written on how to pair it to a GPS, I can't get it to work. If any of you have the Pack Talk Edge and you have it paired to your Goldwing, but then you have an external GPS like I do, I have a Garmin external XT, and you've been able to pair it to the XT or to another external GPS, put it in the comments down below how you got that to work. And are you having any issues with volume? Now, they did send me the Duo, so I have two of these headsets. And I tried it with both of the headsets, and I had the exact same problem with both of them. Now, I reached out to Cardo. I sent them uh, tech support and email this morning. Uh, actually, two emails on each different issue. One was the volume. One was pairing to the GPS. And unfortunately, I have not heard anything back from Cardo at this time. So anyway, I just wanted to bring you up to date. That's not my review. Uh, I'm going to wait until I hear back from Cardo. These are just my initial results. If any of you have the Pack Talk Edge and you're having issues, put it in the comments down below. I want to make sure I'm not the only one. Okay, let's get on to the first. This is actually an email that was sent to me by, I'm going to open it up here, Jeff. Uh, Jeff sent me a pretty lengthy email. I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'm just going to give you the gist of it. And you tell me if this is something you have experienced or if you know anybody that has, maybe you have a solution for Jeff. So Jeff says, I was wondering if you've had the experience or heard from others on their 2018 plus gold wings not starting after being washed. Okay, so he goes into a little more detail. I'll put it on the screen so you can read it. Uh, I've never had this happen. I've washed my bike several times uh, over the last four years. I've never had this issue. Uh, have any of you had that mill light come on and the engine not be able to start? Do you know a solution? I don't know if there's a loose connection somewhere that's getting water in it. Uh, I asked him if he was using a pressure washer and he said he was not. So um, anyway... I just want to put that out there. So if anybody has any help for Jeff, please put it in the comments down below. Now, these other comments were on some of my YouTube videos. This one was actually from Colin Kennedy. <laughs> this is one of the early ones. This is a comment he posted on my BMW K1600 review video where I actually reviewed the bike. And uh, I'm sure some of you probably read this and didn't get it, but you will when I explain it. His comment simply, Sarah, question mark, is that you, question mark. And so I was busted. I actually did uh, use Sarah Intuned, who, who has her own YouTube channel, a big YouTube channel, and she does a lot of car reviews. 
and I think she does an excellent job on her car reviews. And I did actually kind of copy some of her techniques and her, her methodology of doing reviews because I'm hoping I'll be able to do more reviews in the future like this. And I wanted to have a good format for doing the reviews, and I think she's got one of the best I've seen. So I hope she doesn't sue me for uh, copyright infringement or anything like that. But if you are looking for a really good automotive, she does restorations, she does a lot of stuff, and she does car reviews. Uh, check out Sarah Intuned. I'll put a link to her channel up here in the corner. But yes, Colin, uh, you you busted me. I did actually copy some of Sarah Sarah's uh, stuff. Okay, this is from Richard Brand. Uh, this is on my comparison of the Goldwing to the BMW. Uh, as an owner of both bikes, I went into the BMW dealer to, to buy a new bike and was so disappointed by the sales staff. And having had serious problems with this dealership service department, I told them that I didn't want to buy a BMW and left, only to go down the road to the Honda dealer and buy the new GW or Goldwing. Okay, uh, I, I'm, I had several comments posted where they complain about the dealership or the service uh, of the BMW dealers. That's not unique to BMW. There's a lot of lousy Harley dealers. There's a lot of lousy Honda dealers. You know, there's bad dealers for every brand. It's not unique to BMW. However, I do have a local guy here, a friend of mine, that told me he was going to, he was interested in buying a GTL, and he went to the dealer, and they were so rude to him that he ended up buying a Goldwing. So it does happen. Um, Richard, I hope you're happy with what you ended up with. Okay, this next one comes from Lynn Donahue. This review is pretty far off in a couple of areas. Okay, it's kind of a critique of my uh, comparison to the Goldwing. I've ridden both. There's no way the handling is equal. The BMW was noticeably more eager to ride more aggressively. With respect to the engines, the BMW wins easily, much more engaging. Um, he, you know, he may be right. I, I basically said it was a draw between the two engines because I think they're both excellent engines. But I also tried to point out that they're very different engines. The BMW is definitely definitely a sportier, uh, more powerful. It, it's uh, for the performance guy. It it you know I don't think there's any question it's going to blow away a Goldwing as far as top speed. Some people asked about top speed also. I think the Goldwing, what is 114 miles an hour? I think it's governed at a certain level, maybe 120, but I know I don't think it's more. I know it's not more than 120. I think it's like 114. I don't think the BMW has a limiter, uh, but I think they rated it at 126 miles an hour plus. So it's it's probably fa if if you're into that sort of thing, um, you know that's the BMW is going to be a great bike for a performance guy. Um, this is from Alan. He says was hoping to hear you compare the. Uh, MSRP for both bikes. Good point. I left that out. I left it out intentionally because these videos are going to be around for a long time, I hope, and they should be still popular a year or two from now, and those prices are going to change. However, as of today, uh, the MSRP of the 2022 Goldwing is about $28,700 for the model I have. The DCT Tour model is about $28,700. The BMW, which I did mention in my review, uh, as equipped, uh, was, I believe, $31,700. So it was about $3,000 more. Now, part of that, $1,900 of that, was for the paint job, which I think is outrageous. My motor, my Goldwing has beautiful paint. I didn't have to pay $1,900 extra for it. BMW had beautiful paint, too. No, quit, no question. But um, a lot of the things that are options on the BMW are standard equipment on the Goldwing, like the keyless ignition, the uh, keyless locking of all the bags, the uh, remote lock. That's all included in a Goldwing. That's an option on the BMW. Yeah, would love to see a comparison between the Goldwing and the R1250 RT. I got a lot of comments on these videos talking about the R1250 RT. In fact, when I originally reached out to BMW, I was asking for a R1250 RT to review. 
Uh, and then they just happened to have this press event going on out in California with the K1600s, and it one thing led to another, and I ended up reviewing the K1600. Let's go. Oh, John. John says on my comparison, weak review. That was, I got to have a drink. That, that triggers me. Do I look triggered? Weak review. Well, I got a few criticisms, but not many. Most people did like my review and my comparison videos. It will be the best when BMW puts a DCT gearbox on it. I don't know that that's in the works. Uh, I agree, though. I think it'd be very cool. I love the DCT on my Goldwing. Rod Zimmerman, your review is outstanding. Possibly the best review I've ever seen. I'll drink to that. That being said, I would pick the BMW over the Honda for the performance aspects. Listening to that motor every time I rode would be pure joy. Uh, Rod, I got to tell you, the sound of that engine when you start up that bike, is, it is intoxicating. It, like I said in my review, it sounds like a Formula One race car. It is really amazing. Yet, when you're on the highway, it's completely silent. When you get on it, though, it lets you know you've got something underneath you. Revs IT. If you want a Goldwing, you'd better buy it now as they're being discontinued. Uh, so let's go ahead and talk about that. Well, number one, as far as I know, it's a rumor. I haven't seen anything official from Honda stating that the Goldwing is going to be discontinued. I've seen a lot of different comments. One suggests that maybe they're not going to sell them in Japan because of the environmental issues, of our environmental concerns, or the regulations. Uh, I've seen something that says maybe they're just going to discontinue the manual transmission models because they can tweak the DCT to do different things with emissions. The bottom line is the Goldwing's days are numbered. Um, because of the environmental wackos that run the world. And don't kid yourself, they run the world. Uh, they're going to get rid of everything we love and enjoy. Uh, whether, it's, it, whether it helps the environment or not is irrelevant. They're anti-oil. Uh, they're anti-nuclear. They're anti-everything. They want... Oh boy, here I go. I'm going to get on. Now I'm going to get in trouble because I'm going to get on my soapbox. I better have a drink. They want all renewable energy for everything. I don't know. Now, by renewable, they must mean wind and solar. I assume that's what they're referring to. There are people in power that have said they want to do away with the oil companies. So they want the petroleum industry dead. They want it gone. And uh, when they talk about converting and transitioning to renewable energy, they're talking about wind and solar. And I haven't figured, nobody in the media will ask one of these idiots, how are you going to fly an airplane or a jet, a 737, on wind and solar? I haven't figured that out yet, but maybe they know how to do that. Well, I think what they really mean is they're going to tax the hell out of you. You're going to still be able to buy oil, but it's just going to be so expensive. But anyway... I got off on my soapbox. I, I, I didn't think I was going to do it, but I did. But if they discontinue the Goldwing, that's why they're discontinued. They're going to take away everything you love. Let's go to the next comment before I get off on a, tan a real tangent. I could talk for hours on that subject, by the way. Okay, I want to see a video comparing. This is from Qbird3. I want to see a video comparing your 2018 Goldwing with the same model 2022 Goldwing. Well, I'm glad you asked about that, Qbert, because I've reached out to Honda and recommended that and have had no response right now as of today. I can't get anybody at Honda to respond about getting a bike in my hands that I can do. What BMW did was they gave me a GTL to basically do whatever I wanted to for three weeks to a month. I've been riding Honda Goldwings for 16 years. I've been trying to reach out to Honda for at least 10 of those years to get the same kind of love that I got from BMW Motorrad. So tell, tell Honda, 
you know, I, I'm trying. I am trying. I would love to get a 2022 Goldwing in here and do a side bus. I think it'd be. A, I think they'd sell a ton. I can only do what I can do, and I and I same thing with Indian. I've reached out to Indian. They have responded. I've reached out to every major manufacturer. I am, I've got some other comments here from other. They want people want to see Ducatis. They want to see Yamaha. They want to see Can Am. And I've reached out to all these companies, but they have to they have to meet me halfway. Between the, I did six videos that featured the BMW uh, that I just reviewed. Six different videos, four motor vlogs, a review, and a comparison video. And if you look at the viewership of all six of those videos, over 140,000 views in three weeks. That's a record for this channel. I've never had videos get that kind. I had a 38,000 view moto vlog. I've never had a moto vlog get 38,000 views. So what I'm trying to say is this channel is growing. It's still small. Don't get me wrong. It's a very small channel. I don't, I don't debate that, but the eyeballs that are on this channel are very focused on motorcycles, especially touring bikes, but all kinds of motorcycles. This comparison is by a six foot tall person. If you were five foot three or five foot four tall, I think the comparison would be a bit different. Very true. Uh, that's why I said I always make sure to mention in my review that I'm six foot two and that I was cramped on the BMW, and I'm, I'm cramped a little bit on the Goldwing. So, you know, I'm cramped on both bikes, but not as cramped on the Goldwing as I was on the BMW. So, yeah, if you're five foot three or five foot four, you might have a hard time reaching the ground with your feet if you're five foot three or five foot four, but you certainly wouldn't be as cramped. A lot of it depends on your inseam. I have a 30, about a 33 inch inseam. So if you had, even if you're six feet tall, if you only had a 29-inch in, in, inseam, you wouldn't be nearly as cramped as I am. As for your comment about expensive repairs in case of a tip-over, my K1600 GT, uh, GT, not a GTL, but a GT, did fall over in a parking lot when the side stand sunk into the blacktop. I had the side cases off. So there was no damage to that, or the bill would have been much higher. It was still $4,100 just for falling over in a parking lot. I'm not going to read the rest of it. Just to talk about the tip over. And, you know, come on, BMW. You guys are famous for your engineering. Are you telling me that you can't devise some sort of tip over protection that's not hideously ugly? I mean, Honda did it. But I, I, my bike has fallen over in the garage when I thought I had the kickstand down and I didn't, and it just boom, fell over. And the, the tip-over bars did fine. They didn't. I had no damage. No damage to the handlebar ends, no damage to the mirrors, no damage to the saddlebags. It did exactly what it was supposed to do. Now, if it rolls on over off those tip-over bars, then you've got a problem. It's going to be, then you're going to have to spend some money. $4,100, man. Him bike. Honda needs to make a GL1000 Goldwing 50th Anniversary Edition. Now, in 2025, that is a cool idea. I like that. No bags. Looks retro, just like the old GL1000. I might be interested in that bike. Okay, Mr. C says, fair Question mark? Well, everything is relative. What if a lifelong beam, Beamer rider were to do the same comparison? Do you still think the wing would come out on top? Probably not. You know, I think I said right up front that my riding experience and my history is has uh, uh, tainted my opinion. I mean, there's no way. I've been riding a Goldwing for 16 years. That has to... Uh, affect how I perceive motorcycles and how they run and how they work and how they feel. So absolutely, I have no question that a BMW enthusiast, longtime BMW guy, it would uh, would make a different decision in the end. Let's see, we're getting close to the end here. I know it's a long video. Thanks for hanging in with me. I appreciate it. 
Thank you very much. Last one. Great review, Cruise Man. I would like to see you do a review of the Road Glide Limited, which I currently ride, or perhaps the new Indian Pursuit. Okay. I have not reached out to Harley yet. I will. Uh, hopefully that will result in something. And here's the thing. I need to have the motorcycle for quite a few days. I can't go to a one-day event and do a ride around three miles. I'm not going to waste your time with that. There's plenty of videos on YouTube where they have media guys come out and do a, a three-hour ride on a bike. Uh, that doesn't interest me at all. I'm not going to do it. If I can't have the bike for at least a week or two, uh, it doesn't interest me. I have I want to dive into the bike. I want to get to know the bike. I want to get intimate with the bike. Uh, just like the Pack Talk Edge, I'm hesitant to even say anything about it right now because I really haven't had enough time with it. I need to have time to, to learn it, get to know it, and uh, so on and so forth. So anyway, thank you very much for joining me again today. I didn't even get half of my drink down, but don't worry. It will not be there in much longer. Um, thank you for joining me today. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I'm sorry it took so long, but I had a lot of comments to go through. Remember, ride often, ride safe. I'll see you soon.